Welcome to Mind Echo. Join us as we delve into Neville's original lectures and books. In this video, we harness AI technology to recover and enhance Neville's voice, guaranteeing unmatched audio quality and clarity. Today, we're excited to present his remarkable lecture titled, Enter the Dream. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the wisdom of Neville Goddard. God only acts and is in existing beings or men. Embracing the fires of experience, God was consumed by the flames, rose from their ashes, and continues to rise as Jesus Christ or divine imagination. Good and evil are not conditions imposed by some benevolent deity, but states the soul must experience in order to surpass them and awaken as God himself. Tonight, I will share with you an experience of a friend, a lady who wrote saying, in my dream, I possess the power to be anything I wanted to be. The moment I observed the being or thing, I became it, felt its emotion, and shared its thoughts and environment. This I did throughout the night and awoke reluctantly because I was so enjoying the experience. Now let me tell you what Aldous Huxley wrote about his friend D. H. Lawrence. To be with Lawrence was an adventure because he was not of the order of this world but belonged to another universe. When I was with him and he shared his experiences, I felt that he knew what it was to be a tree, a daisy, a breaking wave, or the mysterious moon itself. He saw things the mortal eye could not see. He was a sensitive, intelligent man who could cook, sew, embroider, and do woodwork to perfection. Yet he could sit alone doing nothing and be completely happy. He could put himself into the skin of an animal and describe in the most convincing detail its dim, inhuman thoughts. I am quite sure my friend never read that letter, but I gave her my immortal eye. The air of imagination is now open in her, and she has shared her experience of going from state to state, from things to persons, knowing their feelings and emotions. How is that possible? Because God is the only actor. Blake makes this statement. Eternity exists and all things in eternity, independent of creation, which was an act of mercy. By this, it will be seen that I do not consider either the just or the wicked to be in a supreme state, but to be every one of them, states of the sleep into which the soul may fall in its deadly dreams of good and evil when it leaves paradise following the serpent. Everything in the world is yourself pushed out. Every animal there can be entered by you and you can experience its emotion. For that animal is your very self. You are the animating power of the universe. All things were made by you and without you was not anything made that was made, for you are life itself. This I know from experience. The universe is alive in you. It has no life on the outside. It is yours to animate, to stop, to let go, and stop again. Blake was right when he said, God only acts and is in existing beings or men, for God is the only actor acting imaginatively in the human imagination. While seated here, you can see your home in your mind's eye, but it does not have the cubic reality as does this room. But one day, you will think of something and see it more vividly than you now see the speaker. You will enter it not as a shadow, but as a three-dimensional space. I have sat in a chair or rested on a bed with my eyes closed, as in sleep and seen what I could not see if the lids were open. Knowing exactly where I was and what I was doing, I allowed consciousness to follow vision and stepped into that image which closed itself around me as I set out to explore that world. I now know the truth of Blake's words. If the specter would enter into these images in his imagination, approaching them on the fiery chariot of his contemplative thought. 
If he would make a friend and companion of any one of these images, which always intrigues him to leave mortal things as he must know, then will he rise from the dead. Then will he meet the Lord in the air, and then he will be happy. Many times, while sitting in my chair or lying on my bed, my inner eye has opened, and I have seen what no mortal eye could see. Then I would enter into the image by allowing my consciousness to move on its fiery chariot of contemplative thought. Clothed as I am, the world calls me Neville, but I, a conscious being, have moved out of this body and into a world which instantly clothed itself around me. And I explored that world clothed in a body just as solidly real as the one I left on the bed or chair. If anyone had entered the room, they would have thought Neville was sleeping. Yet I was fully awake, consciously aware of being separated from my external self. Look at yourself in the mirror, and you are seeing the mask God is wearing in this world of death. But you cannot see the immortal you who cannot die. Your friend or relative may appear to die, but he is not that which is put into the furnace and consumed or buried in a grave. He is that which his I am is conscious of being, exploring other worlds just as real as this, until he experiences the mystery of Scripture. You see, God only acts. Sitting in my chair and seeing what I should not see, I acted by consciously entering into the image I was viewing to discover it was not a flat surface, but a three-dimensional reality, complete and ready for occupancy. My friend knows what it is like to become anything that intrigues her, and I'm quite sure she never read the letter Huxley wrote of his friend D.H. Lawrence. This is the same Huxley who showed no interest when I tried to tell him of my birth from above, of David and the visions I have shared with you. He liked me as a friend, but he had his own limitations, as everyone does. In a certain social world, if you pronounce a certain word differently, you are catalogued as one who is not in, as it were. And Huxley would not listen to my vision because I did not speak as he thought everyone should. I could have told him things beyond the wildest dreams of his friend D.H. Lawrence, but because of his little stumbling block, Aldous could not hear my words. But I tell you who are seated here tonight, you are the only God. You will know this from experience, for the day is coming when, instead of seeing your thoughts in your mind's eye, you will see them three-dimensionally, just as you are now seeing the speech. When the eye of imagination opens, you will instantly move into the thought, whether it is regarding something that took place 10,000 years ago or exists in what you might think to be the future. I tell you, there is nothing that is not here and now ready for you to enter and become one with. One day you will realize, like Blake, that neither the just nor the wicked are supreme states and you will be able to forgive everyone for what he is doing or has done. You will know that although his action seems horrible, based upon this level, he is expressing a state and must do as the state dictates. Good and evil are simply states of experience through which the soul of man must pass in order to awaken to the being that he really is. He must embrace the fires of experience and be consumed before. He can rise from the ashes to be one with the being who sent him. I can't tell you the thrill that is in store for you when the eye of imagination opens, for only then will you be actually seeing for the first time. And when the ears are open, you will hear what no mortal ear can hear, as you see what no mortal eye can see. A week or so ago, 
I went to an office regarding my Medicare, and I was asked to prove that I would be 65 on my next birthday. I knew that at one time I had obtained my baptismal certificate, but I hadn't seen it in years and had no idea where it was. Two nights ago, about 1.30 a.m., my divine brothers said to me, your baptismal certificate is in your wallet. I awoke, opened the dresser drawer, and there, inside a wallet my wife had given me, back in 1938, was the baptismal certificate I had obtained in 1924, when I needed it to go to London during my dancing career. So I know that when the eye and ear of imagination is open, every desire of the heart will be seen and heard. That is your destiny. I say, you are God, the only actor in this world. No matter what you imagine, God is acting. He is the only actor, acting by imagining. You can imagine anything. Cover the act with faith by believing in its reality, and it will come to pass. When Blake spoke of eternity in his statement, eternity exists and all things in eternity, independent of creation, which was an act of mercy. He was referring to the little garment of flesh and blood you wear. Your garment is, it is eternal. It is a garment that anyone can and many will wear. In my case, this is a garment in which one awakes. I am not the garment called Neville any more than I am any part I ever played on Broadway. I was in six plays, but I never was the characters I played there, but simply the actor. And so it is with God. He is the only actor in eternity, and God is the human imagination. It is the human imagination who plotted the entire play before he came down and assumed these eternal bodies of limitation and death. And it is the human imagination who will rise from these eternal bodies into divine imagination from whence he came. In the book of Genesis, we are told, the serpent spoke and said to the woman, you will not die, for God knows that when you eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, your eye will open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. This is something you must know in order to surpass and rise beyond it as divine imagination. The serpent knew that as you ate of the fruit of the tree of good and evil, although you would not die, you would embrace the fire of experience, be consumed as its victim, and rise from its ashes as God himself. That is the story of scripture. Blake added this wonderful thought saying that we left paradise following the serpent. This implies that we did not begin here on earth, but left paradise following the serpent of generation, who told us that when we embraced the great experience of good and evil, we would be consumed in its fire, and yet not die, but would rise from it. In his book, John tells it in a lovely way as, I came out from the Father and came into the world. Again, I am leaving the world and returning to the Father. So we did not begin here, but coming out from the Father, we found these garments that seem to begin in time, but really are an eternal part of the structure of the universe. In my own case, this little garment seemed to begin in 1905, but it was always so. It was always growing into manhood and departing in its sixties, always appearing, occupied by God, moving towards a certain point, and then disappearing. All of these are but garments to be picked up and worn. People think they are the garments they wear. That is because they do not know who God is, for he is in the one who is wearing the garment. It is God, your own wonderful human imagination, who acts and is in existing beings or men. There is no other God, no other actor in the universe. If you want to test God, you may. Your immortal eyes and ears 
need not be open to test your creative power. Simply assume you are the one you want to be. Remain faithful to your assumption. And although everything denies it, you will become it. It does not matter who you are or what the world thinks of you. Anything is possible to the eye of imagination. As I mentioned earlier, had Aldous only listened to my message rather than my English, I could have told him things beyond the wildest dreams of D.H. Lawrence. But I am a colonial in his eyes, and like all Englishmen, the colonials are looked down upon. If you don't speak with the Oxford or Cambridge accent, you are a colonial in their eyes and not one of the boys. If Aldous had only listened, I could have told him what it was like to not only be the wave, but to be the ocean. When I was but a boy, years before puberty, in fact, it stopped at puberty, I would know the night it was going to happen and was afraid to go to sleep. It was marvelous to be the ocean, but to be the breaking wave, a small portion of my being, was frightening. I, the ocean, would toss myself the wave into the skies, and then catch myself upon my own bosom as I fell. This experience would happen to me once a month over a period of years. I could have told him what it was like to be infinite light with no circumference, but my accent put barriers in his mind and he could not hear me. This is true the world over. People judge from appearances as the individual's true being is unseen by mortal eyes. God comes to us unknown and unseen, but in his own wonderful, mysterious manner, he lets us discover who he is. And when we do, it is in a first person, singular, present tense experience. I am not trying to flatter you when I tell you that you are God. Everyone, the one who murders is one with the one who is murdered. The rapist is one with his victim. These are all God's experiences of good and evil in order to surpass good and evil and rise as divine imagination, who is God himself. You and I came down and embracing the fire of experience, we have been consumed by it 